Here we are. Okay. Now, during the last uh, lecture, we um, started speaking about uh, uh, fluorescence and phosphorescence uh, of an organic molecule. And you remember that very simple uh, sketch that we made, we told that uh, a molecule that is in the ground state, that is a singlet state, so it, that is not excited, can be excited to a higher electronic state that must be a singlet if you want to excite by light. And by making the violet transition that is marked here, can be excited to an high, high level. We said that the first thing that happens is that from this high state, the molecule will relax to uh, the lowest single state possible. And that there is a probability also that it will relax non-radiatively. You remember that this curved arrows means that the transition is not, not radiative to a triplet state. Once that the molecule is here, it is or here, it is still excited, it has excess energy. And from here, it can relax to the ground state by emitting light. And this process is named fluorescence. Or from the triplet state, it can relax to the ground state. And this process is named phosphorescence. Okay. And you remember that this is a permitted process in the frame of the uh, um, Fermi theory that is. Uh, describing interaction of a molecule with the electromagnetic radiation in the so-called dipole approximation. This is a permitted process, so you do not change uh, spin when you go from here to here. And this process should be uh, impossible. But since uh, the molecules are um, let's say the structure of the molecules is very complicated and there is a, a, the probability that there is an interaction between the spin of the electron and the angular momentum of the electron. The spin orbit interaction makes that there is a small probability to have this transition. So the rule is not strictly true, but there is a small probability that you have triplet to singlet uh, processes. Yeah, uh, you will ask me, but listen, if there is a weak probability to have this transition, there is also a weak probability to have the reverse, to absorb from a singlet and a triplet. Why don't we speak about that when we speak about absorption? Because when you speak, when you uh, discuss absorption, clearly this process, the violet, is much more probable than this. So there is a small amount of molecules that transit to the triplet, but they are so few that you don't realize, you don't, you don't see them. But when you are here, you are studying only the emission process of these excited molecules, then you see this effect. And uh, this is a very simple model that we discussed. And uh, we also discussed uh, uh, the fact that the absorption spectrum of a molecule, that is this curve, that is uh, uh, the experimental curve that you see here, that is the envelope of many possible transitions from the state zero to the state zero, from the state zero to the state one, from the state zero to the state two and so on. And uh, this, would, this, are, um, this would be 
disarm, say, uh, the um, absorption line that you would expect for a, a high isolated molecule. But when a molecule is a, in an environment, when the molecule is at a certain temperature, when it hits the walls of the reservoir, these uh, peaks are broadened, so they get broader, okay, and they merge one with the other. And the result that is that experimental, you measure that, okay? And when studying fluorescence, that is uh, the process in which you are in the first excited state here and you emit light, okay? Then light emission can take place when you transit from this state zero to the state four or to the state three or to the state two or to the state one and so on. And of course, each of these transitions correspond to a photon energy. This, here, the photon energy is small if you go from zero to five, but if you go from zero to two, the photon energy will be large. And therefore, in a fluorescence uh, emission, you see uh, that you have a, a fluorescence uh, um, transitions uh, that are uh, written like here. Okay, now I, I'm always puzzled by this curve. And, and that's okay. Uh, you see here, okay? That, in, and you see that uh, the, the, in the fluorescence uh, that you get when you transit from the state zero to the state zero as an energy that is larger of the fluorescence that you get if you transit from the state zero to the state four, of course. Okay. Now, if you uh, think that you can approximate this Morse potential with a parabola, okay? So with a harmonic potential, then the spacing of these levels would be constant, okay? And also if you appro can approximate this with a harmonic potential, then the spacing of these levels would be constant. When is this true? This is true if you uh, restrict the vibrations of the molecule around the minimum. If you are in this region here, of course, if the molecule vibrates very much, okay, it will explore this region here where the potential is not parabolic, okay? So the approximation to the, of the harmonic approximation, when is it true, really, really, really true? When you restrict your study to the first few vibrational states, zero, one, two, and three, because here you are in the region where the potential can be approximated with a harmonic potential, okay? Of course, if you study high vibrational levels, you will feel the distortion and the spacing will not be the same. Now, if you are in the harmonic approximation, then this spacing is constant and it is the same as this spacing here. The wave function for the vibrational state here is the same as here and also the others, they are the same. That means that the probability to have the transition from here to the state two, okay, it is the same than the probability to go from here to the state two here, because you, you have the same arrival and departure wave functions and the spacing is the same. That is the why these two lines, zero two and uh, zero two, they have the same intensity, okay, the same probability. And that is the why the absorption and the fluorescence spectrum are symmetric, specularly symmetric. Okay. Now, one important thing is the following that when you calculate the envelope, 
okay? Or when you measure the envelope, the emission spectrum, the absorption emission spectrum will be peaked, their peak will be in correspondence of the transition with a larger probability. This is peaked here. And of course, this is peaked here, okay? And there is a spacing between these two maxima. This spacing is named the Stoke shift, okay? Now, this is connected to the structure of the molecule. If you have a different molecule, and for, some, for a different molecule, for example, if the transition zero to zero is the most probable, then the absorption spectrum would be picked here. There would be a peak here and then something else here. And also the emission spectrum would be picked there. And in that case, the stock shift would be zero. Okay, so for some molecules, the zero zero transition is the most probable and the stock shift is zero. For some other molecule, for example, this transition could be the most probable and therefore this would be the most probable and the two, the two spectra would be picked there and the stock shift would be larger. So the stock shift of, of a molecule doesn't depend only on the spacing of these two levels but it depends also on the transition probabilities. And this is uh, connected to the structure of the molecule. Now, in the case of uh, this molecule, and this is the definition of the stoke shift. It is the uh, energy or wavelength uh, difference between the peaks of the absorption and the emission spectrum. In the case of oxazine one, that is the molecule that I used in these experiments, the stoke shifts the shift between the absorption and emission band is really very small. Okay, so this is a molecule that has got a small stoke shift. Okay, now this. Uh, uh, concepts that de described during the previous lectures can be uh, inserted in the frame of a larger model. And this model is due to Jablonski, okay? You see in this period in, Rio, in, in Italy, we don't like very much Polish people because they are uh, trying to, to make a sort, sort of Poland exit. To, to stress the European Union. They want to some money from the European Union and there is a struggle between the European Union and Poland at the moment. This guy from Poland uh, drawn the famous Jablowski diagram. That is the diagram here. That is a conceptual diagram, very similar to the one that we gave before, but in which we can uh, uh, draw more processes than we discussed before. And we want now to describe these processes one by one, okay? So here there is the singlet state, the ground state of a molecule. Now you understand that, that these are vibrational levels. And this is a, a singlet zero state, an electronic state. You can have a first excited electronic state. This spacing here is typically, we told two, three electron volts, okay? And you can have a second excited electronic state. Both of them will have a vibrational uh, sublevels, okay? You can have uh, triplet states, okay? And uh, for convenience, we just draw here the first triplet state, but there can be other triplet states here, okay? As in the case, and here you can have S3, S4, S5, and so on, okay? Now, the frame of this uh, uh, model, 
you can have transition from the ground state uh, by means of light excitation. So you can excite with light and molecule and you can bring it to the second excited state or to the first excited state, okay? Remember that basically when you are at room temperature, a molecule is in the lowest electronic state and in the lowest vibrational state, but with 1% probability it can be here, okay? Can be in the first vibrational state. Now, these processes they are absorption processes, okay? And now we have a new information. Typically, when you send light on top of a molecule, this transition takes place in a time that is of the order of one femtosecond. Okay, so this is 10 to the minus 15 seconds. Okay, so it takes a very short time to get here. It's almost instantaneous as a process. And that uh, uh, comes back to the Frank Condon principle. During the absorption time, the, the process is so fast that the nuclei do not move. There is no mechanical movement of the system. Okay. Now, we said that if you are excited here, okay, the first thing that it will happen is that the molecule relaxes uh, to the first excited state here in a non-radiative way. So there is no light emission here, okay? And typically this internal conversion and vibrational relaxation takes place in a time that is in between 10 to the minus 14, that is 10 femtoseconds, and 10 to the minus 11 seconds, that is 10 picoseconds, okay? That is the typical time. Now, uh, once the, the molecule is here, in this state here, normally it can do several things, okay? The first thing it can do, it can relax to the ground state by emitting light, okay? And we have seen in the previous two slides that it can transit here or here or here or here, okay? So there are some uh, emission lines that then form the emission spectrum. This process here that is named fluorescence takes place in a time, on a time scale that is of the order of 10 to the mine 10 to the minus 10 to the minus 9 10 to the minus 7 seconds that is in between 1 nanosecond and 100 nanoseconds so once that the molecule here before emitting and we remind that we are speaking of spontaneous emission okay there is no uh, we do not deal here with the stimulated emission because the molecule is excited and isolated. It will relax in a time between one and 100 nanoseconds. This will depend on the particular molecule that you have. Rhodamine 6G has a typical lifetime of 10 nanoseconds. Oxygen typical lifetime of two nanoseconds and so on. Okay. And this is fluorescence. Now, there are also other possibilities. The molecule can relax non-radiatively, okay? What does it mean? I have an excited molecule. It is in a solution, for example, or it is inside a, a, a solid matrix, no? Then it can eat the walls of the container or it can uh, have interactions with a solid matrix and it can relax energy and give away energy in a non-radiative way, 
So there is a probability that you have this process. But typically, uh, marker. You had you had a marker last uh, time. Okay. Typically, you have a. This is a, a plastic uh, matrix out of plastic, a transparent plastic, and inside this plastic there is a dopant, that is an organic molecule that is emitting in the green. Okay. So if you put green molecules, they will give you the green color. If you put uh, uh, blue molecules this will emit in the blue okay the the solid matrix is the same the, the dopants are different from so you don't change the technology to produce these markers you just change the molecule that is inside okay and when these molecules are excited with light they go to the excited state, they can emit light, or for example, they can interact with the plastics here and release the energy by heat, okay? You know that if you take this marker and you put in the sun, no? on the desk in the sun, and if you take after some time, it will be hot. Okay, and the black part will be hotter than the green because light from the sun is absorbed here. And instead of emitting light, the black, what does it do? It releases energy by heat and it is heated. Okay, if you have a white piece of plastic and you put in the sun, the energy from the sun is not absorbed, is diffused away, and the white thing will not emit light. And you live uh, in Iran, uh, and your houses uh, in the, in Iran are probably like the houses in the south of Italy, where the roofs are flat and they are painted white. Okay, in the houses you have a terrace. Normally, they are painted in white or in silver. Okay, but silver is forbidden now. You can we can't do anymore because airplanes are disturbed by silver. Okay, so you can have this. You can have another process that is named quenching. This process is very important in microscopy. For the moment, we just say that there, there can be quenching, that is a non relative process, and we will discuss it separately. So we will come back to this. Okay, now. There is also the probability when you are here that you have so called intersystem crossing. What is this process? It's the process in which, due to any non radiative interaction, the molecule goes from the singlet state to the triplet state, goes here in this state here. And this is the blue line here. Okay. And uh, there is also the probability that if you are in this triplet state, by any reason, you can go back here. Okay. Also, this process is very important in microscopy because it gives rise to the so called blinking, and it is the base of the storm and palm microscopy that, are, that were Nobel Prizes uh, uh, 10 years ago. So, we shall discuss this in detail. So you can go from year to year, from year to year with no radiative process. Once that you are here in a triplet state, you can relax to the single state with light emission. This process is named phosphorescence. We discussed it. And typically, this process has a time scale in between one millisecond, 10 to the minus three seconds, up to 100 seconds, 10 to the two seconds. Okay. So, what does it happen when you go to visit Tehran and you buy a small copy of the most important mosque in Tehran? Does it, does it happen on the, in the market? You, you buy the copy of the mosque in Tehran and it is painted with a paint that kids 
put in the sun, okay? And then they go back to their room in the dark and it is shining light, okay? What is happening? They are painted with molecules in which this process here is forward somehow that you are putting your system in this state here. And then the, this relaxation takes a time that is of the order of 100 seconds. So it means that when you bring your room, this will continue emitting light for two minutes. Okay, you will see light emitted here, and this is phosphorescent. So these are the typical time scales that you have in this process. And we introduced, with respect to the simple sketch that we made here, this is a first sketch, we introduced new processes the internal conversion, the intersystem crossing, the phosphorescence, and the quenching. Okay. And now we want to discuss this process uh, one by one, a bit, but not much, a bit more in detail, not really much. Okay. We just want to, to tell what it happens. So, what does it happen? When you have a molecule that, for example, is uh, in the second singlet excited state, so we are here, okay, and it is excited to one of these levels. You see here that the, this Yablonsky diagram is proposing you three cases of yellow arrows. And in one case, you can pass from this state to this state here with a, um, a mechanism that is named internal conversion. Okay. Or in another case here, you make a transition inside the same band from one vibrational level to the other. Okay. Now, this internal process, sorry, from here to here, the same electronic state but different vibrational level is named vibrational relaxation so what is doing the molecule it is in the second electronic state with a high vibrational energy and it is relaxing the energy by emitting phonons by releasing energy as heat and it can go here okay but now this process here uh, reminds you that this first excited state and second excited state they are characterized by a Morse curve. We we sketch them like this. Okay, this is a sketch, but we have to keep in mind that there is this level here. Now there is the possibility that this Morse curve is superimposed to the Morse curve of the lower level that they overlap here. And it can be possible that the vibrational state of this or the electronic state SE2 that is described by this wave function here and the vibration, a high vibrational state of this band here, they are defined by wave function that superimpose with each other. So what does it happen when you relax here? That you are described by this vibrational function that it well fits this vibrational function. And then it's a direct transition from this band to this band. And the, the energy you see is given to the vibration again. So you go in the lowest electronic state while with more vibration, you make a transition. This is as if you are passing from one Morse curve to the other Morse curve. And this is named internal conversion. Why internal conversion? Because you're passing from electronic level to another electronic level without emitting light. Okay? You are directly passing 
by releasing energy through vibrations. We don't say more than this. This is just a short description. Then you have inter-system crossing, and we don't say anything else about this. We just say that you can transit from singlet states to triplet states directly by non-radiative processes, by uh, releasing energy to emission of a, of a heat. But this is the only thing that we say, don't, don't mind. And this is a slide in which we discuss phosphorescence in a slight uh, more uh, detailed uh, uh, way. So think you do the following, okay? Think that you have some a light beam, okay? And think that let me see if you can have darker. Okay. Think that you have a, a light beam and, and think that you can, for example, excite uh, uh, Your molecule from this state to this state here okay and you send this light on a container in which you have a solution with molecules so uh, the molecules that are inside this solution can absorb light, okay, and can emit light. No? So every molecule that is here uh, will emit light, and uh, with respect to this direction, for example, you measure light emission in a certain direction. Okay. Now think that you are doing this not by continuously illuminating your sample, but, but by sending a pulse of light. So the light that you send is constituted by light pulses, okay? And this they get here at a certain time T naught. So you send a pulse of light, the molecules will instantaneously absorb in 10 to the minus 15 seconds, they are already excited. And after that, they will begin emitting, okay? And uh, think that If this is uh, the time when you send the light pulse, think that you begin collecting, uh, uh, that would be very desirable to have a, a second color. You begin collecting the, the light that is emitted, emitted, emitted immediately after exciting. Okay. Then, and you can uh, see the emission spectrum of your molecule. Now, for example, if you have this organic molecule here, it is not necessary that you understand uh, what time. Of molecule is it is an organic emitter, then you will measure an emission spectrum that is the red curve that is here. So the emission takes place between 400 nanometers and 700 nanometers, so in the visible range, 
it is characterized by a peak here at about uh, 420 nanometer and you see there is a second contribution a shoulder here this is what you measure in this interval here you are collecting light from your system but be careful which light are you collecting you are collecting you are exciting from here to here you are collecting the emission the direct emission by fluorescence so molecules will emit because they make fluorescence but there will be some of them will be go here and will emit by phosphorescence there are two contributions to the emission of course we know that this contribution here is smaller because this process is less probable okay now look if you as a matter of fact i should have written that we begin collecting say starting from 1.5 nanoseconds after the emission in this case this is what it is telling the system now think that instead of collecting light in this window you collect the emission in a window that is more delayed and for example before starting to collect light that is emitted you wait in, in this case it is not 1.17 it is 0 0.17 seconds you start collecting after 0 0.17 seconds okay now if you start collecting immediately so you sum up what is emitted in this window you see the color of your emitter that is blue if you start collecting later and you integrate in a later window you see the color of your cuvette that is green what is the reason why the reason is that once that you have excited your molecule here in one frame per second okay the molecules that are here who make a direct transition by fluorescence here they do this transition on a time scale that is of the order of 100 nanoseconds so in the time between one and 100 nanoseconds all molecules that fluoresce have fluorescent they finished fluorescing in the meanwhile the molecules that for any reasons went to the triplet state will emit by phosphorescence on a later time scale they will emit later so if you collect in this window here you are taking both fluorescence and phosphorescence if you collect in this window here and you have waited for enough time you will collect only phosphorescence that is the why here this is uh, the green curve here that you see it is uh, the spectrum that you measure if you collect in this window here so this is just due to the phosphorescence you see the green curve is the phosphorescence only the red curve that we measured before is the sum of fluorescence and phosphorescence now if you uh, subtract the green curve from the red curve you get the blue curve that is fluorescence only and you realize that the fluorescence spectrum the blue one so this is fluorescence blue and blue is different from the phosphorescence spectrum and that the phosphorescent spectrum takes its maximum at a longer wavelength because generally this transition has an energy that is smaller than this transition here so the wavelength is longer okay now be careful these are normalized intensity they have been normalized to the peak one is the peak if one would put the absolute measurement the phosphorescence uh, intensity is much lower than the fluorescence because phosphorescence is a less probable process 
and you can see it because the noise that you see here is much larger than you noise in the red curve so it means that this curve this curve has been normalized to one and you normalize also the noise and you see more noise okay and you can also see that if you measure phosphorescence at low temperature is liquid nitrogen temperature 77 kelvin then the fluorescence spectrum loses its low uh, wavelength range because uh, you you see that if you are at low temperature in the triplet states all the molecules are in the lowest vibrational state so they emit with a certain energy there is no molecule here and no molecule here due to temperature if they are here they emit a lot a larger energy that means lower wavelengths so the fluorescence spectrum and the phosphorescence spectrum they are different and they can be discriminated in time so depending on how you measure you can see both or just the, the phosphorescence okay they can be used to discriminate of course to discriminate them you need a pulsed source you cannot excite with a lamp that is continuously illuminating your sample because if you continuously illuminate this will continuously emit light and you have no time uh, selectivity okay and what time is it No possibility to see the time. Eh? Yeah, okay. 11 already. So we make a pause and then we go out. We make 10, min 10 minutes rest. Ah, I can stop the recording.